Welcome back everybody to another scotch and a beer. Super happy to be pumping these things out since I'm in the pleasant countryside of the Czech Republic, aka Czechia as it is known now. In the last episode, I sucked at Road Atlanta, but at least we figured out what was going on with the steering. In this episode, I'm going to be going over all the happenings in between FD Atlanta and heading to Orlando to meet up with Rob Brokerage. But first, scotch and a beer. So I am super, super excited. I'm finally going to be busting into the Tom and Tool 21 year. The 16 year was absolutely fantastic. And for the beer, I'm going to be going with the Bernard Svetsinski Lesiak 12. So the beers here have numbers on them. And this one comes in a neat little pop top. Smells fancy. Fuck that up. Oh God. Saved it. Don't worry. Well, that's half and half. That's about what Europeans like his head. So I'm just going to leave it there, but may as well take a sip. Hmm, it's not my favorite, but I do like the bottle. So bonus points there. It's super bitter. Whew. Wow. Definitely not my favorite. Let's hope this changes things up a little bit. Get every last drop of this good stuff. First smell I get is like when you're walking in like a mall and there's a candy shop and they're making toffee. That's kind of the, the sweet aroma that I'm getting from this right away. That is super, super good. It has a crazy, crazy bite right at the beginning. And then it slows down into this mellow, mellow sweetness. And you can definitely taste the caramel and the toffee aspects of this particular scotch. It is not quite as smooth as the 16 because of that initial bite, but it does go down smoothly and it has an amazingly outstanding finish. Like right now, it just tastes like I ate a bunch of toffee, which is... Fan freaking tastic. So, A plus for the Tom and Tool 21 year. One thing I forgot about during Formula D Atlanta was on Friday night, after I didn't qualify and I was all bummed out, I got asked by some of the FD employees if I wanted to bring my car over to this after party they were having at a bar. And so, since I wasn't doing anything or having to qualify the next day, I was like, sure, why not? So, we packed the car up, we trailered it down to this bar near the track and I can't remember exactly where it was but it was super cool I think it was me Wolfson and a few other guys who didn't qualify <laughs> and we parked our cars out front we all went inside and I remember Aoki having to sit out front because he wasn't 21 yet so Jesse Wood and I went and had a couple of barley pops and poor Aoki had to sit outside and hang out doing nothing but vaping probably but you know that's what happens he wasn't old enough we moved on but that was fun. Uh, I dropped all the guys off at the airport the very next day and I would go solo mission down to Florida because now I didn't have any kind of time restraints and I could just kind of relax and truck and trailer down. Besides, it was only like a 12 and a half hour drive down to Orlando anyway where Rob Brokerage was. And Orlando is going to be where the car was going to stay the entire time in between the rounds. So I would trailer it down, hang out with Rob Brokerage for just a day, and then fly back out to Albuquerque to get a bunch of stuff done that I had been putting off. Then, and that means that the next two to three months, the car would be on the East Coast. There would be no way to work on it, no way to tune it, no way to fix, no way to test. The car was just kind of where it was at this point. But again, at least we kind of knew what we had to fix once I actually dropped the car off at Rob Brokerage. 
in hindsight, I probably should have just sucked it up and driven the damn thing all the way back to Albuquerque and just begged for help from one of the shops to try to get the thing dialed in, tested at Sandia over and over and over and over again until the car was absolutely dialed, but I didn't have the budget to do that. So there was a huge reasoning behind that. It would have cost almost, uh, the diesel prices back then, it probably would have cost around two grand round trip to get that thing back down to Albuquerque and then all the way to Florida again, not to mention, 80 extra hours of driving almost, which is kind of insane if you think about that. So that was out of the books for me. It was, you know, I'd already felt like I'd missed round one and round two. I did not want to miss round three because I couldn't afford to get there and my budget was done at this point. So I stopped down in Savannah, hung out for a night and then made the eight hour trek down towards Orlando where I would be meeting up with a partial sponsor of mine. Now, I call it a partial sponsorship because it was a discount only sponsorship. They got a lot of real estate on the car for just having a discount on parts. The intention was for me to run this season to the best of my ability, and I was supposed to now give my stroker motor to them and we were going to do some sort of three liter forged whole blah, yada 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 and that was kind of the plan as this was going to be kind of a feeler for everything and then we would hit 2015 ripping and roaring with a three liter rb motor and this was going to be rob brokerage's pride and joy they were going to send somebody out to take care of it um things were looking good on that side and I was on my way down to meet those guys in real life for the first time because up until this point, I'd only talked to them over the internet. So I get there and I meet Ricky, who's an awesome dude. I meet Dan, who was an awesome dude. And I meet Will, the welder, who was an even more awesome dude because he let me store my truck and trailer at his house. So we left the car at Rob Brokerage proper and Will Baker was there to let me use either his parents' house or his house to let me store the truck and trailer for a whole freaking month. So thanks, Will. It was very, very kind of you. You definitely didn't have to do that, but it helped me out a ton. And big thanks to Dan for letting me stay at his house that evening. And we had some barley pops. I believe we went in his pool, or maybe we didn't. And then I learned that all the pools in Florida have coverings over them to keep the bugs and mosquitoes out, which is kind of weird considering we don't have any of that like you go to Arizona or New Mexico or Nevada and all the pools are just open which is kind of nice because it keeps all the leaves out and crap we just don't have that many bugs so Dan was a super rad guy and again thanks for letting me stay and I hopped on a plane that very next morning and flew myself back to Albuquerque so the next month off was spent writing proposals to a bunch of different companies to try and get some monetary compensation as I had done what I do best and broken everything and blasted through any little tiny bit of extra budget that I had. So that was almost a full-time job, trying to reach out to companies, talking to companies, begging for money and or stuff to help me with the rest of the season to which resulted in exactly zero dollars gained. So all of that effort was for naught. I also had to craft and write individual emails to each of the companies that were sponsoring me with all the media from the last two rounds and explaining why I sucked so bad at the previous two rounds and why I wasn't gonna suck going forward, which was a complete and total lie. I absolutely sucked going all the way forward, but I had to make it seem like I wasn't, and I got a lot of cool pictures out of it, so I guess that's pretty much all a company needs whilst being represented. Jesse had finished and released the Whiskey Garage Chronicles video from Atlanta, so I was busy blasting that out. And I was also super stoked not to be sitting in a car for 40 plus hours at a time, back to back to back. That was great. I had to run a local drift event on my month off, as well as design the flyer for the No Coast Drift Party 4, which in my humble opinion turned out to be the best poster that I've ever made. I also sourced a machine shop that would actually touch the RB. Albuquerque is such a small town, there's only a few machine shops, so it was really difficult to find somebody that would actually bite the bullet and try to work on that stroker block. 
Who'd have thought? On top of that, they were like two months out, which didn't really matter to me since the car was going to be on the East Coast for two months at a minimum. So hey, maybe we could get it in for Texas. Now having the car at raw brokerage, I'd hoped it would be in good hands. I was assured that it would be in good hands. As we had chatted about all of the issues the car was having before I dropped it off. It was slightly overheating in the very, very, very minute time that I was driving it. We knew exactly what the steering issues was. I had sent them the replacement bushings for the lower control arms and we were going to chop those bolts down that were blocking the offset rack spacers from steering. Sick. We had a slight plan there. They were also going to change the oil and figure out what the breaking up issue was with the tune itself. And a few other small things like nutting and bolting and making sure everything was generally okay. Lovely. That takes a huge weight off my shoulders because I don't have to worry about doing this stuff. Plus, Jay Wood and I could fly in a few days early to go test and tune for the first time ever in my FD car at OSW that Tuesday, I believe, before FD Miami. So that was a huge bonus. We had a plan and we were gonna be able to do some testing. It was starting to feel like we were a real team for once. Like I was gonna actually be doing the grown up things that a professional race team should do. Weird. Little did I know is that all those things that that shop would end up doing would cost me big time after the FD Florida event. And nothing that they did wrong, I'll get into that in a different episode. Now, speaking of that, now Rob Brokerage was again a discount only sponsor of mine, and they had quite a large sticker on the door right underneath the rearview mirror area. Um, and for a discount only, that was a huge sticker. Most of the other companies that gave me discounts were just side skirt only. Like if it was a discount, you get a small three by three logo on the side skirt. They had like a 15 inch by 12 inch block on the actual door itself. So they had a huge representation and this was supposed to be what I would hope would carry to the next season where we could have them be the full title sponsor with the motor build and all this stuff and yada, yada, yada. So. I was praying for the future this whole time dealing with raw brokerage and I was super pumped on it. So I was hoping that they would do me more of a solid this season since I was broke AF. And I have no ill will or hatred towards raw. They're a great company and they are one of the only suppliers in the US for RB stuff. So kudos to them for attacking such a niche market that is a difficult one to deal with. So much love to them for that. Anywho. The month went by super, super quick, and it was time for us to pack up and leave for Florida. Andy was super busy with his business, so he couldn't actually go to Florida, which was a huge bummer because he was a great addition to the team. Him and I had been friends for a very, very, very long time. We were goal-driven. We kind of started drifting together all those years back, and he started a business and I decided to become a professional driver. It's just kind of how things go and he wasn't able to go. So at this point, it was me, Jesse and Aoki. So Jesse and I would fly out a little less than a week early arriving on Monday morning. I think we left at like four o'clock in the morning from Albuquerque. Whiskey garage, hanging out, airplane style. Shooters, typical fashion. Two down, eight to go. Ended up getting into Orlando around 11 or 12, and Tommy Babiars picked us up from the airport, and instead of just bringing us home or bringing us to go start doing business stuff, he dropped us straight off at a go-kart track and paid for us to do a couple of laps with each other, which was freaking awesome. Thanks, Tommy. You're the best human being I think I have ever met in my whole life. And at the go-kart track, we all set fastest time of the week, even though it was Monday. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're still winners in our own minds. At this point, I'll take every small victory I can get. The next day, we headed over, got my truck and trailer from Will's, and then drove back to Rob Brokerage, where Jesse and I filmed some product plugs for 
raw brokerage like specifically made parts, which I will say are some of the best RB products on the entire planet, hands down, bar none. Hello everyone, Officer Dan, High Plains Police Department. Here at Rob Brokerage, home of the deep V. Just want you guys to really see how deep this V is. Once we were done filming at Rob Brokerage, which I think we got done around noon, we made the trip over to OSW to meet up with Pat Gooden and do some freaking testing already. Matt Kaufman was out there already doing the damn thing, and there was a couple of other local guys that were shredding as well. And like seeing Matt Kaufman's car like one-on-one -on -one, up close, like just watching, it's like, holy shit, like my program is so much further down in, in regards to literally everything than his program is. Like, how am I even here? How am I going to compete with that? Like, it was just eye-opening to be kind of one-on-one -on -one with a team like that that has their stacker trailer and their full support crew and I'm over here with a team that quit and a car that didn't turn until this event and I'm just like fuck my life it really makes you question like why you do this in the first place and I didn't have an answer for myself and that kind of scared me a little bit well, we did what any poor ass broke level tier 16 team would do and we took the front and rear bumpers off as not to damage them because they were the only two that we had. I slipped on my open face helmet and off we went for testing. I'm getting a feel for the car, I'm just doing the small inner oval figure eights and the car's actually steering. Like I can turn the wheel already, there's still some funkiness like halfway through. I think that's just those lower control arms, they were still binding. Uh, the bolts were no longer touching on the offset rack spacers, so that was moving freely and there was no more of that Oh my god, I'm gonna go plowing into a wall feeling as I was transitioning or oh my god I'm gonna spin out for no reason whatsoever. So Fantastic that was a plus on point. I would say the steering was 82% better It feels good to be able to chuck the car in and then counter steer like it's just I hadn't done that in this car yet. This is the first time I've actually drifted it without it wanting to spin out. I can deal with this. My spirits are rising. Now, after like one and a half hard laps, the car starts to get really hot. Again, this is the first time I've driven it for more than like eight seconds at a time, and most of those were spent autocrossing. So the car had no reason to overheat, but now that we were actually giving her the beans, it was getting really hot really quick and then it started breaking up and we were just like huh back into the pits check the spark plugs everything looks good like why is it doing this we let it cool down a little bit we make sure that the coolant is topped off etc 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 we jack the back up as high as it can go so that the air bleeds towards the back of the car because it's a rear mount radiator setup because i'm an idiot we changed my spark plugs to a new set that I had in the trailer. So a big shout out to Matt Kaufman supplying a tool I really couldn't afford, which was the spark plug gapper. Kudos, bud, for having such an expensive tool on your rig. So we get that done. I head back out onto the track. I do a lap. It's starting to feel good. I chuck it in and start to go to the right around the small sweeper and for some reason it hits this weird like 4500 to 5000 rpm rev limit which is like blah 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 and i'm just like huh well that's new <laughs> I tested it again and I went in wide open throttle and just wah, bah, 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 bah. I was, I was just like, oh my God, stop it. Just stop it with this shit. And on top of that, I developed a weird clunk in the rear end. So I was like, well, I either shit a diff or an axle. My spirits are falling. Back off the track we go, we jack the rear end up and sure as shit, I broke one of my 350C axles. Now, when we were building the car, we didn't want to use 240SX axles because A, they're hard to find, and B, the remands are absolute garbage and they break faster than the stock ones. So, Luigi had machined up some sick adapter plates 
that bolt to the ears and then the 350Z axles bolt to those. Now the adapters themselves were great. What we fucked up on was using two of the long axles instead of one short, one long, and the other one was just kind of compressing itself into oblivion and that's the one that exploded. Lesson learned, went to AutoZone, picked up a short one, brought it back, put it in, issue solved. Cool. Still had the weird breaking up issue, which Dan was tackling while we were going to AutoZone to pick up the axle and the overheating. So while we were gone, Dan had turned the boost down quite a bit using the TurboSmart boost controller that we had. We were running about 22 PSI, which put us around 500 horsepower, and he had turned it down to 14 PSI. So I would say we were in like the 380 to 400 range. Get out on track, the car's not breaking up, but it feels so much slower than it was before. Like that 100 horsepower really, really, really made a difference. And I could just tell like the car was struggling even just to do the small, at the angle that I was at, it was struggling to do the small section of OSW, which is not a hard thing to do. A stock 350Z can do that. With no more clunks in the rear end, a slower car that overheated and did not hit rev limit at 5,000 RPM, I decided to cut the losses before anything else went crazy wrong, pack it in the trailer, and bring it over to Tommy Babiars' house. During practice at some point, I did shoot some really cool flames that Jay Wood caught on camera. Sick. Now we dropped the truck and trailer off at Tommy's house, and then we decided it would be a super wise idea to go fishing in Tommy's dad's little rowboat out in the swamps. So we grab some supplies. Jay Wood, Tommy, and I head to his parents' house. We pick up the boat and we head out towards the swamps. It's almost dark when we get to the dock area where Tommy wants to take us fishing and the bugs are starting to come out because it's Florida and it is a swamp and none of us brought any off. We went to this grocery store, we bought a bunch of beer, we bought bait, for... <laughs> nobody bought off. So we go out, we're barely away from shore. Jesse Wood and I had already crossed streams and got our lines all tangled up and we were just not having a good time. The mosquitoes were absolutely atrocious. Like you could wipe your arm off and it would just be blood stripes down your arm. It was insane they were everywhere and we didn't have enough clothing they were biting us through our jeans like it was a bad time the kicker was is we thought we saw a big ass gator so we hightailed it back to the dock upon arrival at the dock i was like man it's foggy out turns out that that fog was just a very dense swarm of mosquitoes <laughs> i swear to god the three of us probably lost a pint of blood each to mosquitoes on top of that, we all looked like we had the goddamn measles. It was not a good idea in any way, shape, or form to do that, but it made for kind of a funny story. I wish I would have taken pictures of us looking like we had measles, and I'm pretty sure we did. I just can't find them anywhere. So we headed back to Tommy Babiars' house where... Upon entering his shower, I had forgotten that the PSI coming out of his shower head is about 494 and absolutely blasted my measle-covered mosquito bit self, and it was the most painful shower I have ever had in my entire life. We spent the rest of that evening <laughs> nursing our mosquito bites, putting anti-itch cream on, and playing video games because Tommy's a big gamer and he's got this like retro system in there and we were playing on that. His wife cooked us food, which was absolutely fantastic. So again, thank you, Tommy, for hosting a couple of idiots that looked like they had measles at your house. Thanks for taking us fishing for five minutes <laughs> and all around just being a rad dude. Now, quick fact. Tommy was doing for Hankook what Jesse was doing for me. So Tommy was going around to all of the rounds and filming all of the Hankook drivers driving. I never made any of the videos other than me breaking my car, but hey, at least I made the videos. Um, so he was doing that while Jay Wood was filming for me. Jay Wood was also putting out his own editions of each of the Formula D rounds we went to. 
kind of for his reel and to show what he could do for a company in case he got hired, which I absolutely knew that he would. I knew my time was limited with the jwoodmedia.com. And that is where I'm going to end my story. In the next episode, we pack up and head for Miami, where I lose another team member and have to do Formula D Florida with just me and Jay Wood. I hope you guys all had a great Christmas, and I hope you have a happy new year. I'm going to try to get this video out today, which is late Monday for me. It'll be early Monday for you, starting like right now. So I'm going to try to get this thing cut, edited, and uploaded today. And that's it. I'll see you guys for the next episode. Peace. And that's all she wrote. That's how you play the game, bitches.